I've been trying to find out if there is a perfect line I can use for my 2D animations that has a nice ratio between size and texture. As an animator, the pen or the brush is my main tool. The line work needs to read well, but still blend into the final image. Is this the right one? Or maybe this one? I'm drawing on a digital device, which helps a lot, but I would like to capture some of the beautiful qualities of the analog too. A slight graphite texture might feel nice, avoiding a sterile, clean line. Up until now I've not set myself any strict rules for how lines should be used in my animations. I've always gone for what feels nice, but maybe it's time for a closer look and finding out what I really think works. Of course, we don't want rules that can't ever be broken or changed, but at least we can inform ourselves, so our decisions are deliberate. Style and subject will of course matter here, but whatever you're making, perhaps what I've come up with can be useful to you too. My current favorite animation brush that I've created has a slightly broken edge, but a sharp quality that keeps the line intact in most places. It's opaque enough that it hits its end goal color quickly, without creating layering opacities if intersected. The brush has a hint of a texture that can be controlled using a flow setting. I like to keep it between 30 and 60%. Within this range you get quite a lot of texture at 30% and almost a solid line at 60, so somewhere between these looks good. This brush is for raster based drawing, so not a vector line. I prefer drawing with pixels over vectors. That is done in softwares like Photoshop, Clip Studio Paint, I think TV Paint does it too, Procreate as well and yeah, some others. The correct brush size or thickness will vary depending on the resolution of your canvas. I work in 4K and there I find a thickness between 12 and 18 pixels look good. Keeping the line thickness somewhat consistent throughout the various shot of a film unifies it and shows that the subjects were drawn at the correct scale from the start. I will allow myself to drop the thickness slightly if drawing full body characters in the far background. But also reducing details in any background element is a way to show depth in a scene. So I think those characters or objects that sit further back in the scene should be simplified and drawn with more line economy. I want to avoid it looking like I drew the character large and then scaled them down to fit the scene. I want to draw them in their correct size. But if they are really small, a slightly thinner line might describe them better. For anything really close to the camera, I would not use any thicker lines than what I had defined earlier. That would just result in the element looking scaled up afterwards. My suggested line thickness does not imply that you have to use the same, of course. You might have a style with thicker, bolder strokes, for example. Don't be directed by what I show here, but if you find it to be a desired look, then of course, by all means, join in. Even though I say I draw with a consistent line thickness, I still keep pressure sensitivity on for the brush, which means it does taper in thickness as I draw. Were I to draw really light on the canvas, it would appear as a skinny line. I like the slight tapering of the line as it behaves more like a natural pencil this way. So therefore, pressure sensitivity is nice to have enabled. Keeping the brush size the same throughout just means my drawings also stays consistent. For my initial rough passes, I like to reduce the flow of the brush quite low, 
to get a bit more texture out of it, as well as increase the brush size. And that can help to capture the right energy in the drawings before tying them down to clean lines. Often I find that when describing motion, the first rough drawings have the most expressive energy, and it can sometimes be tricky to keep that in the finished artwork too. But I like that this brush can be used for both the early sketches as well as for the tight lines. In this video I've labeled it as my animation brush, but of course you can also use it for any form of illustration. I like using it when I'm sketching and sort of blocking out scenes, environments or characters. I'm confident you can create something similar in whatever animation app you're working in, but if you want to use my brush that works for both Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint, then head over to my Patreon where you can claim it. There I also have a lot more videos that you can get access to. Ironically, my long-term animation project focusing on the subject of rock climbing does not feature outlines on my character, but solid colors instead. However, a lot of the work I otherwise create is using line work. This has been a closer look at the brush I like to use for line work in animation. When it comes to painting backgrounds or coloring the final animations, you can browse through my previous videos here on the channel, but I will touch on those topics more in upcoming videos as well. So stay subscribed. Thanks to all my Patreons for their continued support. I hope this has been useful and I'll see you again soon.